Okay, I'm gonna call this meeting of the Public Safety and Homeland Security Committee <coughs> uh, together, and I'd like to ask uh, Representative Rick Williams to give us a blessing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let us bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you again for another beautiful day. Thank you for the opportunity to be here to serve the citizens of the great state of Georgia. Please bless our men and women in uniform, the men and women in harm's way, Please watch over each of them. Thank you again for the opportunity to be here and bless us as we try to take care of the people's work. In thy name we pray, amen. Okay, first on the agenda today is uh, House Resolution 1269 by Chairman Tanner. And I assume we're working off LC 392563. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, before you, House Resolution 1269 is a uh, straightforward resolution that deals with creating a study committee for the purpose of studying local law enforcement retirement. Um, you've heard a lot over the past several years uh, about maybe creating a statewide system for pay, uh, about a retirement system, and as someone who spent uh, 20 years working and running a local law enforcement agency, I can tell you that having a statewide uh, pay scale is challenging for a lot of reasons. Uh, one being that the cost of living is very different in different parts of the state. Uh, other constitutional offices in local government and their employees are paid uh, many times on a similar pay scale with the law enforcement community. Uh, but one of the things uh, that would be very helpful is looking at a statewide local law enforcement retirement system. Other states, including Florida, have a similar program. So no matter what agency the person works for, that retirement follows them. Um, I'm not here uh, before you today uh, laying out how that would look, uh, what, how that would work, how much that would cost. I'm just saying that I think it is something that uh, our law enforcement officers do a wonderful job in our local communities. It's very difficult to attract and keep law enforcement officers in local government, especially across rural parts of our state. Uh, and I'm just saying that this is something we need to look at, we need to study and lead on this area. Um, in the resolution, it would allow, this is a House uh, commi study committee, House only, and uh, it would have uh, various members uh, serving. Uh, those start at lines 21, well, actually, um, yeah, 21, two sheriffs, two police chiefs, the executive director of the em employee's retirement system, the chairperson of the board of commissioners of the peace officers annuity and benefit fund, the chairperson of the board of commissioners of the sheriff's retirement uh, fund, and then also members of the Georgia House uh, would, be, uh, would serve on this, four members of the Georgia House, including the speaker appointing the chair of this study committee. Uh, I did get a call from <clears throat> GMA and asked that we consider uh, placing a member of, of the Municipal Association or GMA, whether that be a mayor or a council member, and, and also ACCG on the this study committee. I have no issue with that if this committee wanted to add that. Um, I think it's important to have everyone at the table as we discuss this. Uh, but I would uh, appreciate your favorable consideration of this study committee so that we can move forward with bringing real resolution to this area that's been talked about uh, many, many times over the years. I'd be glad to answer any questions, Mr. Chairman. Number 19. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Tanner, for bringing this. And I do agree with the GMA having a representative there. But my question to you is this, are the, are the officers currently under the state plan and or no plan? <clears throat> there's, there's no state plan for local law enforcement. There's the POAB, which is something that a law enforcement officer can choose to pay into on their own that is, after 30 years of service, pays around 700 and some odd dollars a month uh, retirement. <clears throat> That's uh, meant to be a supplemental type retirement system that law enforcement officers, firefighters also have similar plans, but there's not a statewide law enforcement retirement plan now, no ma'am. Uh, one other further question, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, a couple of years ago, the Democratic Caucus, um, we had a subcommittee to go out and visit the local sheriffs you know, in about four counties where we actually talked to these officers. 
And one of the things, that's why I'm so glad to, to see this now, because some of the um, input that we got was from officers who, if they had not had their spouses, insurance, um, and their spouse's salary, there is no way that they could make it. They were actually, they, they get their health care from their spouses, if they're teachers or state employees, and because they don't make enough to, uh, to supplement. So we need to take care of our officers. And so uh, this is long overdue, and I thank you. Well, I appreciate that, and <clears throat> yes, I agree. And, and most officers, and, and especially in rural parts of the state, have to work uh, multiple off-duty jobs to be able to uh, to survive. So, um, it uh, their their salary and their law enforcement agency typically is not enough. I think that's why one of the things that attracted people many years ago to law enforcement was the good benefit package, uh, retirement and. Uh, insurance. Well, over the years, that's been eroded away. Right. So I think if we can replace that with a good statewide local law enforcement retirement system, that will help attract and specifically keep officers in the system. Uh, the other thing about this is it would allow them, even if they moved agencies, they would be able to keep that retirement system in place. So, um, I, and again, this is going to require a great deal of work and conversation of exactly how this would work and how it would be paid for and how much it would cost. Uh, but I think we, this is a good starting point. Thank you. Thank you. Number 24. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> Chairman Tanner, thank you for bringing this bill. It's long overdue, as my fellow representative has said. Uh, I'm all in favor for it, and at the proper time, I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Number 28. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for bringing this bill. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I came in a few minutes late. I wanted to just clarify, there, there was a, another bill um, about a gang, very similar in language at the beginning at least, uh, about a gang prevention and intervention task force. But that's something separate, right? That, that's, that's another bill. Uh, deals with something very different. Right, okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I was looking at, excuse me, okay, I was looking at the wrong thing here. My apologies, okay. yeah, sure. okay, thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> well, I add my two cents, having spent 43 years in, in law enforcement. Uh, I've, uh, <clears throat> you know, I've got a good retirement since I worked for the state the whole time. But, uh, you know, as I've traveled around the state and I've worked in many areas of the state, and, and I've, uh, <clears throat> it's sometimes it's beyond belief at the salaries that some local law enforcement officers receive, much less the erosion of, of benefits. And then uh, many of them have no retirement. <clears throat> and a lot of people don't join the, the Peace Officers Annuity and Benefit Fund because they think it's too expensive when they, when they first are hired. You know, I didn't do it for years. Uh, I was on like seven or eight years before I joined and, uh, <clears throat> because I thought it was too much. I mean, just uh, – and when you're 22 years old, you don't think about being 60 or 65. It, uh, and I, but <clears> – <throat> I've always uh, followed what they do in Florida, uh, particularly with regard to this retirement system. And, you know, there you can work for a PD, go to the Sheriff's Department, go to the Highway Patrol or uh, the Bureau of Investigation, and everything continues. You just continue to pay into it, and you, and you get a benefit. Uh, now, <clears throat> I'm very aware of uh, how much financial liability, you know. I mean, it's going to be pretty significant, and I think it'll get – push back for a while just based on that but uh, I'm glad to see that you put uh, the gentleman from the employees retirement system on there who very obviously uh, has a better understanding than probably anybody else on there of the financial issues but uh, you know I think this is this is in times of diminished uh, participants in, in law enforcement I mean most agencies you see the signs now for the state patrol up and down the road when I came on the state patrol in 1969, we had 31 positions in trooper school and 3,300 applications. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> now they can't get enough applications for the uh, and and the benefits, even with the state agencies, have have diminished greatly. I mean, I pay a couple hundred dollars a month for life for health insurance for myself. Uh, when I came on, it was $18, and they paid for everything, $18 a month. 
now I pay a couple hundred and you know there's a deductible that's pretty significant so it's a uh, it's hard to attract good people and uh, <clears throat> you know I've always been of the philosophy you get what you pay for and if you don't uh, if you don't compensate people for good work uh, you know you live with uh, with what you have so I really appreciate you bringing this you. Uh, it's it's very significant number 19 uh, Mr. Chairman, um, is it appropriate now to do the amendment to add that? It'll be uh, after we uh, get a motion and a second. I'll open it up for questions, and, and you can make okay. an amendment. Any further questions? Anybody in the audience uh, care to speak to it? <coughs> yes, sir. Hey. Isn't this our guy from GMA? <laughs> Good day, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, Todd Edwards with the Association County I'm very aware of that. Georgia, <laughs> otherwise known as ACCG. Uh, we commend uh, Representative Tanner for bringing this bill and would sincerely appreciate adding a uh, county commissioner uh, just because of the uh, budgetary implications of all this and uh, appreciate y'all's consideration if it's so the will of the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> no further questions? Sure. Um, he just made a point to say um, county commissioner, but is that the is that your preference versus a county administrator, or is there any limitation on that? Well, uh, if you would put one county representative as suggested, I don't know that you want to say as, as named by ACCG, but either commissioner or administrator, however you'd feel comfortable doing that. And obviously, we don't make the ultimate decision on that. I believe in this bill, the House Speaker would, but uh, if at least we could make a recommendation, that would be great. But <coughs> 21 maybe if we, maybe if we had to pick one maybe we could say a representative from ACCG and GMA and let let your organization decide who that might be, be that would be fine that be. if you're comfortable with that yeah and and and, and. they're two separate and. entities two separate yeah yeah. <coughs> yeah if you left one of them off yeah we'd, you, you, uh, you need to back yeah. here again <laughs> we need to bring both of them to the table We, f we find both the police and sheriffs. Okay, any any further questions? Hearing none, I recognize uh, Representative Williams for a motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Ms. Frazier would uh, like to make an amendment, I believe. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make an amendment to add um, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm adding two more now, um, which is a county commissioner and nope. or, or administrator. And. For <coughs> well, the speaker or the governor, you, this is a commission. Usually on a commission, uh, the governor has a, you know, <laughs> I, would, uh, I would say that we ought to have GMA a, since they are over all the the mayors in the state and ACCG who are over all the uh, all the county commissioners that uh, their selection process would probably be best received. Okay. No, it could just be just a representative from ACCG. Representative from ACCG and GMA. Oh, and GMA? Yeah. Okay, so um, Mr. Chairman, let me repeat that. I'd like to add, um, make, uh, do an amendment to add a county commissioner uh, uh, excuse me. I would like to make an amendment to add a representative from ACCG and GMA to the list. Is that correct? Chairman? If it, I, I think uh, leg council must be watching from uh, have oversight because <laughs> I got a text from them with their suggestion. They always warn me to be careful about delegation of duties to ACCG and GMA because they're not specifically state agencies. Okay. So their suggestion is, but again, it's up to this committee, but their suggestion is that you say the executive director of the Georgia Municipal Association or his or her designee and the executive director of the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia or his or her designee. That's my amendment. <laughs> <laughs> that. 
Have we? Or let me hold your phone. Have we got that? <laughs> <laughs> have we got that? <clears throat> Any further questions? Yes, ma'am. Right. It's it's both two different people. Okay. Hearing no further questions, uh, we're this is the vote on the amendment. Oh, we've got a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Now we go back to the original motion as amended. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank, Thank you, you, Representative Tanner. <laughs> Okay, is, uh, is is Representative Gilliard here? I believe he is, Mr. Chairman. If you could get him, he was just in here for a subcommittee about 25 minutes ago. We got one more. I saw him walk by a time or two. I thought he was waiting outside, but he's Representative Holly's going to get him. Got one more. We're waiting for the author. He he, he just stepped out. You done? Yes, we're done. I apologize for not being there, but I guess you understood. <laughs>
Come on forward. Let's uh, let's get on. <clears throat> okay, uh, we got Representative Gilliard here on House Bill 883, uh, the substitute for House Bill 883, LC 41264S. Is that correct? It is correct. Okay, you. Floor is yours, Mr. Chairman, and this distinguished committee. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to present this bill to you. It is a substitute of a original House Resolution 585, which was a study committee that we had uh, for the issue of gangs, youth, and violence on last year. Uh, in traveling through all the cities, all across the state of Georgia, members of the Georgia Retail Association, the GBI, the Georgia Surf Association, the DAs, Georgia Police Association, the Boys Clubs of Georgia, Girls Clubs of Georgia, uh, all the different organizations, 100 black men. We have uh, tried to get a representation, a casual rate of as many organizations. GMA and ACGG helped us by putting together a survey to send out to 159 counties. We got 123 back. Everyone said we can we can look at this issue, but we can't do it by ourselves. We need prevention, we need intervention, we need wraparound services and after school programs. So this is um, a substitute to the original House Bill 883. And what we've done is the original one talked about being a task force with 14 members. This one uh, changes to 15 members. Um, it is recommended to do a commission uh, reporting at the top of the calendar year um, to the House uh, and the Senate um, Public Safety and Homeland Security Committee. The focus is one effort, one effort for Georgia. There are a lot of people doing things. There are a lot of people doing prevention programs. There are a lot of people getting grants, accountability, of what the state of Georgia gives individuals for programs. Are the programs working? What can we do for the long term? So this is a commission uh, dealing with prevention and intervention. <clears throat> do we have any questions? Well, I'll say a few words in support. Uh, <clears throat> I actually uh, served on the uh, gang committee with the uh, with the uh, uh, representative Gilliard was the chairman of the committee, and we went all over the state. And <clears throat> you know, I was I was pretty much astounded by the uh, the intervention programs that are already in place. But what what kind of disturbed me was that every area has a different group of people doing some type of intervention, and there doesn't seem to be any unity in how they go about it around the state. And uh, I think this is a, is would be a great tool to to do that to have a commission and uh, you know try and wrap our arms around who's going to do what to who and and how we're going to do it and how we're going to fund it. So uh, you know I I applaud you for doing this and uh, I think it's uh, you know I've always worked on the other end of uh, you know putting people in jail that uh, and I don't I've never thought that was the best solution. You know if we can uh, if we can prevent it up front and and teach people to be good citizens in lieu of uh, causing this consternation and ended up uh, going to prison and then uh, ruination of their lives too. Uh, it ruins a lot of lives. So uh, I commend you for doing this and, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to act now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, we got some questions now. 
Number 19. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Representative Gilliard, can you tell me exactly what the purpose of the commission is? I know you say that we got a lot of organizations out there. Um, we're going to allocate funding for this commission for two years, I understand, by reading some of this in the bill. But what is this commission going to do now once it's formed? Because is it going to go around to the 123 counties, I believe you said? Are, are they all going to meet and work with this commission to help combat some of the gang violence? Uh, is anything set up yet? Well, what GMA did is we did a survey and we did get 123 surveys back. Uh, we are going to continue to work with GMA uh, by talking to the mayors and the county commissioners uh, from the municipalities to ask for a buy-in. A lot of this is collaborative, collaborative work, um, whether it is with the boys and girls clubs, et cetera. So this commission would kind of piece together who's doing what. Uh, one of the oh. things that was said was we don't have any Saturday programs really collectively. A lot of after-school programs. Most municipalities have their community centers. So kind of find out who's doing what. Um, if we have allocated any funds for anything, whether through our agencies of DHS, um, the superintendent of the schools was on this committee, uh, the commission of DJJ, what's working um, in those state agencies? So we're gonna kind of look at what's, what's there and see what's working. If some funding needs to be adjusted, there's opportunities also, you know, to track those 501c3s that are doing the work to see what we can do to hold them accountable also. Okay, thank you. Number, tw number 24. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you again for bringing this bill. Uh, on line 48, members shall serve without compensation, provided, however, that any legislative member shall receive the allowance as authorized. So they'll get a per diem for travel, I guess. Right. But, yes. uh, like a study uh, committee. But um, at the proper time, I'd like to make a motion. We're approved, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we got one more question here. Number 28. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the right one. This is the right one. <laughs> yes, you, you missed it. I was confused a little bit earlier. So thank you so much for bringing this bill. And just one more time, can you please tell me the difference between the task force and the commission? You know, originally when we, we wrote this, um, we wanted it to be a commission. Okay. Um, for the for the stability and long longevity because we knew we didn't get in this overnight and it is going to take I think the representative was alluding to do we still take it around the state do we still try to get more input it's going to take that and so um, also to have it kind of juris the jurisdiction of uh, connected to the state of Georgia through the, 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 the committee through the house and the Senate I thought was really important to give a report so that the committee, the commission could even be accountable, just not be a standing, a dormant um, uh, commission. So the, the commission reports to that? Once Who does it the, report the to? Top of the calendar year, give them a report, a recommendations to, to, to the House and the, the Senate committee. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. The other part of that is it really comes under the jurisdiction of the governor, <clears throat> and that's why he has so many appointees here. I was the chairman of uh, the Pipeline Study Commission about uh, five years ago, and uh, just to warn you up front, the governor's office is supposed to appoint somebody to uh, uh, <clears throat> write the recommendations and keep, and we didn't find that out till about three meetings in, so it was difficult to go back, and we did have somebody taking notes, but it's it's not like a study committee where the uh, the house provides you with somebody so you need to make sure before you go in with that but number 19 thank you mr chairman actually mr chairman my um comment is to you i know that you served on that study committee when you all went around the state so what we're doing now is all of the information that you got from around the counties and all the many organizations that are out there doing work, gang violence work, out of that, we came back with this, which will now take you back out there to see how effective these organizations are uh, in dealing with gang violence because there's so many of them. And I know there's a lot of organizations out there trying to help. So actually, we're just trying to come back now and see what works under this commission, I just needed that. 
Pretty there. much. I, I think uh, what we were doing was seeking information about what was going on out there, and now we put together a commission to try and 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 take that information and, and some more information that we're going to garner around the state and put something in place to try and deal with it effectively uh, across the state, not just in 150 different uh, municipalities, 159 different counties. But, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we are not requiring these local counties to incur any cost or anything. Uh, not, not, under at, this. not at this point. And, uh, I mean, that's a matter for the legislature in, uh, in future years when this thing is uh, solidified and there's, uh, there's an effort to move forward. Then, uh, then we go through the usual procedure we do with funding with appropriations. Okay, thank you. And, and let me add to that uh, for, for the positive. A lot of those mayors and chair chairpersons have uh, come to us and expressed a need for more programs, so it would be up to that individual jurisdiction. Um, I'm elated that we do have a buy-in that they have been involved in, in, the, in the conversation. Okay, do we have any further questions from members of the committee? Do we have any uh, any questions or anybody in the uh, in the audience who would like to speak to this? Hearing none, uh, I assume we're ready to vote. Do we have a motion? I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed. Off the rules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the committee. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>